Just when I thought I had completed all of my lab videos, I was listening to the lab video and realized that I said something really stupid. So I'm trying again. This is going to be female reproductive uh, anatomy. And we're going to be covering uh, the body parts in the order that an egg, ultimately a fertilized egg, would take on its way uh, from where it's made uh, to where it would leave the female body. Um, it, but in your lab manual, everything's in the opposite order. Uh, let's start right here with the ovaries. The ovaries are found in the back part of the abdomen. They are inferior to the um, kidneys. And the ovaries in females are responsible for making eggs and also for making the hormones estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now, an egg will be um, ejected from the ovary when it's mature, when it's ready for the path to perhaps becoming a pregnancy in a process that's called ovulation. That ovulated egg now has got 24 hours to either be fertilized and start a pregnancy theoretically or die, right? So biological clock is ticking. Now, uh, human eggs are really large, so large that the ovulated egg with her friends around her, she comes with a bunch of other cells, that actually you could see it um, just with the naked eye if it was uh, floating around in a Petri dish. Um, but it actually has to get captured by the end of this structure. This structure right here, this structure right here is called the uterine tube. And the uterine tube is also known as the fallopian tube, F-A-L-L-O-P-I-A-N, fallopian tube. Either one is correct. The end of the uterine tube kind of flares out into sort of a trumpet shape. This trumpet-shaped end of the uterine tube is known as the infundibulum, generally the infundibulum of the uterine tube. And the very end of the infundibulum has got these floppy things that are shaped a bit like fingers, and those floppy things are called the fimbrae. When an egg gets ovulated, it needs to be caught by the fimbrae, and then it heads down the infundibulum. Here's something that's important. Um, if there is going to be a successful fertilization of an egg, it happens up here in the infundibulum. Uh, remember this ovulated egg, it only has 24 hours and it can't swim, the, the egg can't swim. So the egg is getting bounced along the surface of the inside of the uterine tube, um, partially on cilia that are moving it along. And um, it, so it is only going to get about this far in a 24 hour period. So if it's gonna get fertilized, it happens way out here. And then for the next five or six days, that egg, fertilized perhaps, is going to slowly make the journey down the uterine tube, the fallopian tube, until it arrives here in the uterus. The uterus is this structure. I'm going to outline it with my, with my laser pointer here. That is the uterus. The uterus is the only structure of the human body that's really um, modified to allow for the development of a human embryo, fetus, ready to get born little kid. And it's really remarkable because it starts off being the size of a very small pear. And yet by the time the baby is ready to be born, it's quite enormous. And it doesn't just stretch because in order to push that baby out, this muscle, the wall of the uterus needs to be very strong. Uh, so the uterus. The uterus has got different regions. You don't need to know the names of most of it. Uh, this area is known as the body of the uterus. This, this region here is called the cervical region. And the cervical region is important. It is a part of the uterus. Running through the cervical region of the uterus is the cervical canal. The cervical canal, uh, when a woman is not giving birth, is actually a very tiny little tube 
that separates this sterile part of a woman's reproductive anatomy from the vagina, which is distinctly not sterile. Many bacteria and yeast are living in that region. Normally, this cervical canal is blocked with a thick mucus that makes sure that the bad bacteria stay out there and are not allowed inside. Uh, let's see, you do need to know the names of two of the regions, two of the layers of the wall of the uterus. The muscle layer is called the myometrium and the inner layer is called the endometrium. Uh, about once a month when a woman has her period, has her menstrual cycle, it is actually the inner part of the endometrium that has died and it is this stuff that comes out through the cervix and through the vagina to become that bloody discharge um, of a woman's period. Let's see. So we've got the cervix. You know, the whole uh, uterus is it's kind of funny the way it attached to this tube, the vagina. The vagina is the tube that is designed to receive the erect penis. And it's in the vagina that the semen, hopefully comparing carrying a very viable sperm, it's here that the semen will get deposited. Um, those sperm in the semen are going to follow a strand of mucus that is going to now be welcoming the sperm in through uh, the uterus and out to the fallopian tube, hopefully to find uh, the egg and fertilize it. Um, when it is not the right time of a month for fertilization to happen, the mucus that's here is so thick that the sperm don't get up there at all. And one of the types of birth control that uses progesterone or a type that uses a, a structure called an IUD, the way they uh, uh, prevent fertilization is by making the mucus here in the cervix and here in the uterus so thick that the sperm cannot swim and get to their destination. Okay, yeah, I think that's it here. This is um, an image that's from cerritos-anatomy.com and there's a link to it on the homepage of the lecture part of AP120, but also on your, your lab, AP120. Um, and this is what the model looks like with all of the pieces stuck together. So let's do a quick review. Here we've got the uterus, uh, the ovary, it's number 15. This area is called the infundibulum, it's number 14. The end of the infundibulum would be the fimbrae. This part here is the rest of the uterine tube. This is the uterus. What is this? That is the rectum and the anus. What is this? Give it some thought. If that's the uterus, and if that's the rectum, what is that? That's the urinary bladder. Yeah, that's the urinary bladder, all right? So this would be the vagina, also known as the vaginal canal. What else do we need to know here? Let's take this apart. It looks like this. Now we can see the inside of the rectum, and we can see the inside of the uterus and vagina, and the inside of the urinary bladder, and the inside of the uterine, I'm sorry, of the urethra, right? And here you can see that the thick pink layer, lighter pink layer of the uterus, that's the myometrium. And the inner layer, the inner layer on our model has got two different colors. It's got a dark pink and then a line that's such a light pink, it's almost light white. Those are both endometrium. Yeah. Uh, this is the cervical canal and this whole region is called the cervix. Here is the vaginal canal, also known as the vagina. This is the urethra. Good, let's see. This, pat, this mound of fat right here is known as the mons pubis, M-O-N-S, mons pubis. And the mons pubis is a pad of fat that develops after puberty, and it is a shock absorber so that when people are having intercourse in regular missionary style, their um, pubic bones are not hitting each other. What is number six? 
Number six is the clitoris. Now that's not the whole clitoris, that's just one part of the clitoris, uh, but you will find the clitoris by knowing where the labia are. Uh, the opening to the urethra and the vagina are protected by two folds of skin. The outer fold of skin is here, it's labeled number four, and that's called the labium magus or the labia majorum, um, and that's just single and plural. The inner is known as the labium minus or the labium minorum, anyway, plural and stuff like that. You can find the clitoris by tracing the labia minorum to the front part, and that's where you will find it. Let's see, here is our ovary, and uh, when the ovary pops out an egg, that oocyte, that ovum, is going to um, leave with lots of little cells that are kind of her posse that she's coming with, and it needs to be captured by these things, the fimbrae at the end of the uterine tube. So the vulva. The vulva is the name for this external anatomy of the female reproductive system. The mons pubis is a pad of fat right up here. Um, I want you to notice that the opening to the urethral, the urethra is anterior to the opening to the vagina, and that is anterior to the opening of the anus. Here we have got the thick, um, larger outer fold of tissue that makes up the labium magus. The labium magus usually has got pubic hair on it. The inner fold is the labium minus or labium minorum, and it generally is not made out of a simple, sorry, stratified squamous. It's more made out of the stuff that looks like the inside of your mouth, and it generally does not have pubic hair on it. And if you follow that fold up to the front, you will find the clitoris. And the clitoris is the dominant uh, source of uh, sexual excitement in female uh, anatomy. And when women have orgasms, it's generally because of clitoral stimulation. Uh, let's see. For those of you who are going into a nursing program, uh, one of the jobs of a nurse is to place catheters into the urinary bladder. When you're placing a catheter into a man's urinary bladder, it's quite clear where it needs to go. If you're placing a catheter into a woman's urinary bladder, it is less obvious. And so one of the mistakes that your instructors or senior nurses love to see the newbie make is to try to place a urinary catheter into the vagina, all right? It, it doesn't seem to make sense that the clitoris is up here, but the vagina is back there, all right? However, make sure you don't make that mistake and then you won't look like a silly newbie. The opening to the urethra is between the clitoris and the vagina, it's right here. All righty, I guess that's it, yes. That is it. Make sure you know your myometrium from your endometrium. And you uh, don't have a quiz on this particular topic. You will need to know it for your lab final, which is going to be a practical on Canvas.